from the library's community engagement team and thank you for coming even though you know we hoped for a beautiful sunny evening to watch birds we got a little chilly a little cloudy a little rainy which we need right so but we're gonna have fun anyway you know why because the bird man of katie pouty is here <laughs> john sprovieri has been watching and photographing birds for over 16 years, or is it 17? 17 now, yeah. 17, because he was last here in January. We did, he did a bird watching program right here in the River Room. And uh, now John is president of the Katie County Audubon Society. So did some of you BYOB? Not beer, no, <laughs> binoculars. So if you did, great. And did you bring some viewing equipment with you? I did, yeah. Perfect, so you're all set. Good, so, well now, it's time to talk birding for beginners, birds of summer. Let's give a warm welcome to John Sprovier. Ah, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, really great to be back here at the Gail Borden Library to talk about uh, my favorite thing, which is birds and birding. I call it a pastime, but uh, honestly, for me, it's it's really an obsession. <laughs> and uh, I, I hope that uh, at the end of this talk, that perhaps uh, I can plant that seed and, uh, and get you all obsessed with birds as well. So why go bird watching? First of all, uh, I think it gets us outside. It is a great thing. I think uh, um, uh, for most of us, me, I. I uh, a journalist by profession. Uh, I spend my day in front of a computer sitting at a desk. Um, I need to get outside. Birding gives you a reason to do that. And I think, uh, particularly with our young people, this is the sad state of affairs, isn't it? With our, with our young folks, they spend all day looking at their phones and uh, not really engaging uh, when they could be seeing things like this uh, barred outlet. This is uh, just uh, a baby barred owl. I uh, just recently fledged right, right here in King County. So if you get out in the forest, you never know what you're gonna see. Another reason that I like bird watching is uh, I like the intellectual challenge of it. Uh, any puzzle people here, crossword puzzles, anything like that, word puzzles, Sudoku, right? I. I love this kind of thing. I like to figure out what am I looking at? What am I seeing? Um, and bird watching scratches that itch for me. Um, if you got maybe just a super quick glimpse of a bird, you get to uh, you know try to figure out what is it? What did you see? What did you see? What did you what did you hear? Um, another reason I like birding is the thrill of the hunt. If you are you know, we always want to look, in fact, just last night, my wife and I went out to uh, Aurora to, uh, we, we had heard a report uh, of a rare sandpiper. Uh, you know, with these dry conditions, a lot of our ponds are really dried up, and uh, there's lots of mud around, and mud flats, and that is prime habitat for shorebirds. So uh, yesterday afternoon, we heard about a, a rare shorebird uh, something called a white rum sandpiper that was in a dried up pond in Aurora. And well, we had to go see that bird. And so after work, we, we zipped out there and we walked all up and down these golf course ponds uh, looking for this bird. And we finally did find it, and it was really exciting. And uh, um, that's what I, I, I like about it. Birding. So, is it collectors, do we have collectors out here? Anybody collect things? You, what do you collect? Books. Okay. Books. Okay. Do you, do you like? Do you go to garage sales? You like go to book sales? Things like that. Looking for that favorite author or maybe a first edition, right? So, yeah, people collect things. Uh, maybe it's baseball cards. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's comic books. Uh, maybe it's coins, um, maybe it's uh, pottery. Um, if you're a bird watcher, you collect species, right? You've got a checklist. Um, uh, in 
the 17 years that I've been birding, uh, my, uh, my wife and I have seen 1,964 birds worldwide. We've seen 643 right here in the United States, 304 in the United States, and uh, believe it or not, 253 right here in Kane County. So Kane County is a fabulous place to go bird watching. Fabulous. But that's what you do, you collect species. Uh, we're a very close-knit group, um, but when there's a rare bird uh, sighted and, and people from all, uh, all around the Chicagoland area converge uh, to, see the, to see this rare bird and you end up running into the same people. Uh, hey, how you doing? And then you, you catch up and it's a lot of fun. And you give each other tips that uh, Sandpiper I was telling you about earlier, uh, one of our club members, knew that uh, my wife and I wanted to see this bird and, and uh, he gave us a call. Hey, I got this bird in my, uh, in my patch, come on out. And, and uh, he invited us to his house. He uh, uh, escorted us to the spot where he was last seen and, and it was great. So I love being part of a group of, of, of like-minded people. So uh, it's, it's, it's fun. And if you really get into it, birding is adventure. My wife and I now spend, uh, our, our vacations are now dedicated to finding new and, and colorful birds. So uh, we go to, uh, we've been to Africa to see the uh, uh, crown crane there on the left in Tanzania. We've been to Ecuador to see the resplendent quetzal there in the middle. We've been to Thailand to see the ultramarine flycatcher, that blue bird uh, on the right. And uh, it's fun to do that. It's, it, when you get, you, when you're hooked, then you, you gotta go, you gotta go see all the different world's birds. And we've got a whole list of things that we want to see bird watching. Birds are beautiful, aren't they? Even our, even the, uh, our birds here in our local patch are, are beautiful. I, I, pointed out these because I just think they're really interesting that the bird on the right there is something called a tufted coquette that lives in Trinidad, it's just a spectacular hummingbird. Uh, it, my picture does not do it justice, it's just brilliant green, orange, these black spots. Um, the bird on the, on the left there is a burrowing owl uh, that lives in uh, Florida, Texas, Nevada, Arizona, anywhere there's anywhere where there's a loose sandy soil that it can uh, it, it can dig a burrow, and they're they're just cute as can be, and they're very curious, and they're, they're not particularly bothered by people, and uh, as you can see, they 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 uh, they're active in the daytime, uh, which is odd for owls, um, and they're just adorable. And I, 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 yeah, birds are beautiful. And And finally, birding is just fun. It is fun. Uh, my wife and I had the great pleasure of leading a, a tour group to Washington State a couple of years ago. Um, and uh, this picture was taken uh, in, near Pug uh, on Puget Sound at a, a, a shorebird habitat. It is about 45 degrees, overcast, drizzly, windy. And look, look at you see frowns on those people? No, they are smiling because birding is fun. They're having a good time. So, if you want to be a bird, what do you need? Let's talk about it. First of all, you need a field guide. You need to know what you're looking at, and you know. So, um, you can get a hard copy. Uh, you get a hard copy, and there's all kinds. Uh, all kinds, They're, and they all have pluses and minuses. Um, so I, I like Sibley's uh, there on the left, but uh, you can also get one for your phone, um, which makes it very handy because then you don't have to carry a big, thick book with you in the field. Um, but you can get one for if, if you're in Illinois State, or, or uh, Sibley space one for Western United States and Eastern United States. So if you want to break things up, you can do it that way. But I will warn you, though, that uh, they multiply, field guides multiply in your house <laughs> like rabbits and 
you end up with uh, a whole bookshelf full of bird guides. So let's talk about how to identify birds. Uh, there, basically, there's five different ways. Uh, appearance, size, shape, structure, uh, color, markings, um, behavior, sound, is it calling, is it singing, uh, location, uh, time, and habitat. Simplify it greatly. So when you look at a bird, I want you to look at its face, I want you to look at its bill, I want you to look at the, uh, the breast, the tail, um, and the wings, okay? We, we won't get into the minutiae of different feather types and all that, but those are the key areas I want you to look at. And we'll talk a little more about that. Um, so, here's three yellow birds that we can see right here in King County. Uh, bird uh, on the, they're all yellow as you can see, but they're all a little bit different. Uh, the yellow warbler uh, has red, red streaks down its front. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, it has red streaks on its throat, on, on its uh, breast there, on its chest. Uh, it's got uh, little tiny black eyes, a thin, pointy bill. Uh, the bird in the middle, the kind of yellow throat, also yellow, but look at its face, all black. Got that black mask. And then uh, the bird on the right, a uh, blue winged warbler, uh, you can see his, his wings are dark colored, where the yellow warbler, pretty much uniformly yellow. I would say blue winged, dark wings, and it's got that small mask around the eyes. So a lot of times identifying birds it comes down to very you know subtle differences, but two sparrows. Uh, I talked about the song sparrow earlier. Um, again, let's talk about the similarities and differences. We're both about the same size, right? The song sparrow. Has a gray bill. The field sparrow has a sort of pinkish orange bill. The song sparrow got <coughs> bold markings on the chest, right, with a, a, a central chest spot. Field sparrow, very plain, no, no markings on its breast at all. Um, the uh, song sparrow has a boldly marked face. The, brown streaks coming down, kind of a mustache, giving it a mustache look. Field Sparrow doesn't have that. So again, similarities and differences. They both uh, enjoy the same habitat. In fact, I took these pictures at exactly the same spot. Uh, here's our woodpeckers. Um, downy woodpecker, we've all seen downy woodpeckers, I'm sure. Um, the bird on the left, a uh, red cockaded woodpecker. Very rare uh, visitor to Illinois. But this is what I was telling you about. There are different um, uh, different ways to identify a bird. One of those ways is location. Uh, I don't think it works. Oh, well, no, I'll go back to that. Okay. So, uh, so let's go back. Let's go back to that. So uh, you'll see the downy woodpecker has uh, a white, uh, white on its back, the red cockade woodpecker, and a ball black and white on the back. Um, Donnie has got a, a clean white breast, the red cockaded uh, spots, black spots on the breast. So when you look at a bird, you're going to be looking for subtle things. Subtle things, try to learn. But again, look at that face, the, uh, look at the face, look at the, uh, look at the wings, look at the tail, look at the back, look at the breast, the chest. Uh, behavior, what is the bird doing? This can help you a lot in, in your identification. Uh, um, some birds are frantic. They, they never sit still. Uh, there's a bird uh, around here called a, a, a ruby crown kinglet. They never stop moving. Very, very tiny bird, never sits still. It's constantly moving. Um, so if you see a bird that's just acting just completely crazy, and it's small, Start thinking, okay, that could be a kinglet. 
Um, how is it flying? Um, some birds, uh, woodpeckers in particular, they, uh, they fly with a gliding pattern. They'll flap, close their wings, glide a little bit, flap some more, close their wings, glide a little bit. Um, other birds are more soaring birds, right? <coughs> some birds uh, flap their wings constantly, other birds flap and glide, flap and glide. So um, that can be a clue to uh, identity. Um, how is it feeding? Uh, is it uh, is it grabbing insects out of the air? Is it uh, is it pecking on the ground? Is it is it uh, taking uh, bugs off leaves? Is it probing the ground for the bill? Um, uh, where is it feeding? So these are all these are all clues that can tell you what you might be seeing. Uh, sound is another important way to identify birds. So here's uh, three flycatchers. These are all birds that will sally forth and, and grab a flying insect and come right back down the spot. These are all common birds that you can see right here in King County. We have a, a willow flycatcher, eastern phoebe, and uh, eastern peewee. And they all sound a little bit different. So hopefully the sound works. Right. So the next sound check works. Oh. Can you all hear that? Yeah. Which one is that? This is willow. That's a pretty sound. So it sounds like fits you, fits you. <laughs> That's one way to remember bird calls. We uh, we use uh, something called mnemonics, right? Uh, what is the what does it sound like? So that bird sounds like fits you. <laughs> and I think so. Um, so here's the Eastern Phoebe. It's kind of saying its name, isn't it? Phoebe. Phoebe, Phoebe. They sound different too. So here's our song sparrow. You've all heard this call, haven't we? Here's our field sparrow. All right, so let's play that one more time. We'll do one more. All right. So here's our yellow warbler. So I talked about uh, uh, location, time, and habitat as guidelines for identifying a, a bird. So uh, here's our two woodpeckers again that we compared earlier. We have the red cockaded and the downy. So uh, if you're in Illinois and you see you see a bird that sort of looks like a downy, you wonder, you know, maybe that's a red cockaded woodpecker. Well, it's not. Um, uh, the red cockaded uh, only lives uh, in the southeastern United States, and it's a, it's a pretty rare bird, actually. It's, a, it's endangered. It, uh, I don't think you can tell from that picture, but it loves a particular kind of pine tree. Um, and uh, so the only place to see this bird is in the southeast, and only in forests that have a high density of these pines. So this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about location and habitat helping. 
So you could be uh, you could be in Florida, but you're not in a place that has these particular pine trees. So you're not going to see this bird. So if you want to see this bird, you have to go not just to Florida, but you have to go to a place in Florida that has a lot of these pine trees. Um, habitat. Uh, these birds here, the grasshopper sparrow, dick sisso, bottling, these are all grassland birds. So you're, uh, you're not going to see these in uh, the woods. So uh, when you're walking in the woods, uh, you're going to see, you know, you can eliminate a bunch of birds, right? Or, or vice versa. If you're in the grassland, you know you're not going to see uh, the wood peewee because it's, it likes to be in the middle of the woods. Sometimes there's habitat within a habitat. So, um, birds, different birds like different spots. Uh, some birds like this uh, red-eyed vireo here uh, in the uh, upper right-hand corner. That's what we call, uh, they like to live in the canopy of the tree. So very high, very high in the tree. Uh, the way you identify this bird is it's constantly singing constantly singing and it's a uh, uh, it's song I, um, I could play it uh, the song is like here I am where are you here I am where are you they will do this for hours on end they, the, the, the record is like nine hours or something like that somebody recorded it singing for nine hours it was crazy but it's a bird that tends to live high up in the tree so you may not see it always but you'll certainly hear it or you'll see you can see it you know way up there kind of flitting about the other thing by starting in the backyard is it gives you a chance to really study the birds because they're very close by and you, knowing the birds in your local patch will teach you to know if, you, if you're really familiar with the house wren uh, and what it sounds like and what it looks like if you're in the if you're uh, if you're in the woods and then you hear and see a Carolina wren you'll know it's different because you're already familiar with the house friend. And they are different. So where to go birding? Um, as I said, uh, in Kane County is uh, an absolutely fantastic place to go birding. Uh, I cannot, I mean, you know, Cook County uh, has got the lakefront and absolutely that's a bird magnet, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but we have the Fox River. Fox River is also a bird magnet, um, and it's a, a flyway for migrating birds, and so uh, Kane County is absolutely fantastic. It's got a great diversity of habitats. We've got uh, grasslands, we've got old growth oak forest, we've got uh, wetlands, uh, we've got rivers. Uh, this picture here is my favorite forest preserve. It's, uh, it's uh, Les Aarons. Um, but uh, really, the, the best one, the best places to go birding, and we go there once a month as a club, uh, the first Saturday of every month, uh, our club leads a walk to Nelson Lake uh, or uh, Dick Young Forest Preserve in Batavia. Uh, one thing I didn't mention about uh, or one reason to go birding, and it's sort of a corollary, is that uh, um, if you're really into birding, you get kind of competitive. And, uh, um, so, uh, Kane County Audubon, my club, uh, was involved in a contest last month uh, to see which of the state birding clubs could see the most birds in a 24-hour period. Uh, we came in third, so I'm not, I'm not complaining, um, but uh, we had a, a team at Nelson Lake, and they were there from dusk, they were there from dawn to dusk, one day, 12 hours, 113 different species of bird in one spot. That's amazing. So that tells you the kind of biodiversity we have in this county. Uh, Nelson Lake, it's got, it's got everything. It's got grassland, it's got the lake, it's got marsh, it's got uh, old growth oak forest. Uh, it's fantastic. It's just a great place to go. Uh, pelicans uh, stop there. There's some pelicans there now. It's very odd. They shouldn't be there, but they are. Um, another place, uh, Fermi Land. Now they've made it really difficult to get to now. You, you have to have a real ID to get to Fermi Land now um, to get in. It used to be you could just drive in 
um, but now they require a real ID, so if you don't have it, you're not going to be able to get in there. But that's a good place. Uh, uh, John Dewar, right near the Elgin, uh, fantastic place. Oh, Oakhurst was the place I was thinking about with the, with the, uh, with the Austrian Tower. I could never remember that place. Um, but uh, um, Fabian, also a really nice spot here. So these are the top, I'm going to show you the top 20 here. Uh, many of them are, are right up right up north here. Uh, uh, Les Aaron, look, Les Aaron's Batavia. Fox River Shores, not too far from here. Uh, Freeman Game, not too far from here. Bruner, a little bit a little bit further north. But uh, Bruner is interesting because in the winter, uh, they get short-eared olives, which is really cool. Um, and they're up close and personal. And it's, yeah, that's a neat place. Um, Leeward Oaks, another one of my favorite places. Uh, Chelsea Creek, not too far from here. It's up by uh, 31 and 90. Uh, not a bad place. Lots of different habitat there. You've got grassland, you've got ponds. So uh, a lot of different places to go right here in Kane County. You're spoiled for choice. It's definitely spoiled for choice here in Kane County. Uh, resources. Um, Kane County uh, Audubon, I think, uh, definitely highly recommend. Come to our walks. Um, like I said, you don't have to be an, you don't have to be an expert. Uh, novices are welcome. You don't even have to be a member. Uh, just come. We'll, uh, we're happy to share our knowledge with you. Um, there is a, a birding club in, in DuPage County. There's one uh, for both Lake, uh, Lake Cook County. Um, and then statewide, we have the Illinois Audubon. Um, all these organizations need walks. And uh, um, there's a magazine called Bird Watching, uh, available, uh, widely available on newsstands, uh, uh, certainly available at the uh, um, uh, bookstore here on, on Randall Road, um, but pretty much available anywhere. Um, a nice source of, of, of ID help. Um, and then uh, Bird Fest, that's when we, when we first started, we went to, my wife and I first started birding, we went to bird festivals in different states and um, a great place to learn because you, you would get to go out in the morning, you would go on guided walks and in the afternoon you would get uh, lectures from uh, expert speakers and oh my gosh, it's a great place to learn. So I would, uh, if, you, if you think you're interested in, in going in, in birding, I would, I would recommend going uh, to a, a bird festival. So, so uh, the sun sets on my presentation here and uh, I'm happy to take any questions. I hope that uh, uh, I've piqued your interest and I hope that, that you'll get excited about birds and, and come out birding with us. Thank you, John. <laughs> and this, this is a pretty nice place to watch for birds too here it in is, the river absolutely. room, right? It absolutely is, for sure. Uh, uh, particularly uh, in, the, in, the, you know, in the winter months when the, when the ducks are all out here and the, uh, in the fall and the winter. You know, ducks are migrating south and then back in the spring again when the uh, ducks are migrating north. Uh, the river is fantastic. I'm and the sure eagles. And the eagles, the of eagles course. Eagles get here too. And also for bird guides, you might find some here at the library if you're looking for a particular one to see which one you want to land on. Yeah. Check them out first here.